All right, guys, what is up? Episode number 77, we're live. Mastering self-control for growth is the topic tonight. Um, I'm going to dedicate this one to my uh, friend Jerry. Um, let me just read his recommendation. Because um, this is one that's a popular one. It happens a lot to you guys. And I actually wrote a chapter in my book on this, so I'm going to cover that as well too. But he says... Uh, I could have avoided many problems in my life if I hadn't been so emotional in so many of my affairs. You know, I've often said to you guys, um, if you can't control your emotions, you're not going to get anywhere in life. He goes on to say, your perspective regarding self-control and mastering self-control is always a good topic. If you could tie that into anchors and sales, uh, that'd be fruitful. Anchors always test your emotions. Uh, we'd also love to hear about putting distance from people in an assertive way. I have a, sorry, I've been a bit aggressive at times when telling people to uh, get lost. All right. Well, a few things there to unpack. I want to thank you guys for tuning in live. Uh, what is up to the live guys, the live game. Um, I'm just going to drop the link to YouTube if you guys want to head over to, uh, to YouTube and watch over there if you're on the Facebooks, the Twats, the Twitches, the all the other places uh and when you get there subscribe and hit the like button the like button if you know what i'm saying um where do we start emotions so look guys need to control their emotions women get a free pass they get a free pass in a lot of stuff right you know the gals can have emotional outbursts and hissy fits and um, not many people will bat an eye, you know, if we're being honest, um, guys, you don't get the same privileges, right? You've got to have some control. Um, in some cases it's, it's almost celebrated when women have, you know, outbursts and hissy fits. And this is the reason why we have, you know, Karens and stuff like that. It's, it's people losing control of their emotions. Um, I don't know, like, where do I even begin with this? Like, this is a lifelong journey for me too. You know, I've always had a short fuse, especially when I was younger. I mean, some, you watch any of my stuff, you'd be like, Rich is a short fuse. Dude, you know, he can, he can snap. Uh, yeah. You know, Rich snaps. <laughs> um, Rich has snapped, you know, let's be honest. But um, yeah, like I remember when I was young, like we used to ride in uh, packs, you know, we were on our motorcycles and um the thing with, um, you know, having a motorcycle at that age and being young and thinking that you're invincible, you tend to ride hard everywhere you go. Um, some might say it's aggressive. Um, and then there's a lot of people that just aren't paying attention because they don't expect, you know, something that's a little bit bigger than a bicycle with a guy on it to come flying by them at like Mach 3. Um they don't check their blind spots when they make turns or anything like that. And one of the things that used to enrage me, I mean, it enraged everybody in my crew, you know, at the same time, but it used to enrage me when um, they would put your life at risk, right? A lot of people think that motorcyclists are just, um, you know, dangerous or they take uh, great risks that are unnecessary. And that's not really true. If everybody on the road rode a motorcycle, it would be a lot safer for the, those that ride the motorcycles. I'll, you know, I'll just say that because people only drive in a dangerous way to others on the road when they are driving in a fucking cage. You know, let's just put it that way because because you feel like you're safe, like you're invincible. That's what you know. That's why people like SUVs and stuff like that. And you know, I was you know I threw my um, motorcycle jacket the other day, and we used to keep um, spark plugs. Uh, broken spark plugs and our motorcycle jacket because the theory was or this is what we were told anyway is um you know you whip those at a car window and they'll go right through it right and it'll break the window um definitely cause some damage so that so that would be the lesson that motorcyclists would teach um bad automotive drivers i never had to use one personally um but i was told that that's what they were good for but you know you get cut off like i had my life um you know putting a you know, put in a position where I was going down a road once and this guy just made a Yui. He didn't even check his shoulder, nothing. And I was, you know, accelerating up 
just did a U and I had to slam on my brakes to a stop. He came up on the front wheel, almost went over his car and he just kept going and took off. And that was it. Didn't even stop to look. Right. It, and you lose it, you know, and you know, scenarios like that, like you get mad, you get really mad. Right. Um, but it's, you know, it's part of life. You know, things are going to disappoint you. You are going to get mad at shit. You know, the, the, like I've said that anger is a legitimate response in the face of an injustice fact of life um somebody puts your life at risk you can get mad um you know guys that invest into a relationship get married you know even and she goes and uh, you know cheats on him sometimes cheats on him multiple times get mad i get it right but where where it goes into difficult territory is where you lose control of your emotions where you completely snap this is where guys will go out and they'll and they'll say and do and run their mouths in such a way that it gets them in trouble with the law, okay? Um, I've seen it happen before. I've seen it happen to friends even recently. Um, you know, there's a time and a place for certain things, but you also have to know when to walk away and just shut the fuck up, right? And not and not get into a confrontation. Um, I understand the appeal to it because the way of men is a way of gang, you know? And, you know, when you're together with your boys, um, things can escalate sometimes. Make sure you have good boys, you know, if, that, if that's the way that you're going to roll. Um, but getting emotional is just, it ain't, it ain't, it ain't ever going to serve you, man. It ain't ever going to do you any good. I'm, I'm just going to grab this chapter from my book. I mean, I know some of you guys have read it. The Unplugged Alpha is on Amazon. Um, I'll just grab the Audible chapter and I'll play it through. I think it's a nine minute chapter and I'll, I'll, I'll speed it up. So it's like 1.3 times speed or something like that. Cause I want you to hear, um, what I had written about, and I'll kind of build on that and expand on it. All right. Um, unplug out uh, chapter. So the title of this chapter is chapter nine, and uh, it's manage the Fs you give. I spell it out in full, of course. I, I'm not supposed to swear on the YouTubes early on in the show or swear as little as possible, apparently. That's, that's the gig. That's the way things work. All right. So let me just hit play on this. It's just a quick eight minutes and a bit at the speed. So let me know if you have any problems hearing it. Uh, in the chat, but here we go. Chapter nine, manage the fucks you give. When I was young, we played a lot of player versus player video games. There was a popular one called Mortal Kombat, and they all operated on the same concept. You started with 100% on your life bar, and as you battle, each hit you put reduce your life until it was 0%, and you die by a rage of the Life isn't much different. Essentially, it's about us taking it all day long, draining our energy, attention, and resources until we hit zero. Unfortunately, most people don't value the energy they give away, and they freely dispense it like it's an unlimited resource. And this is a big mistake. Many people today see the barrage of hate I get for the truth I reveal in my videos, and they ask me how I handle it. Often my response is, you need to learn to give zero fucks. We all, by design, have a limited amount of energy we can allocate for our daily lives. Everything we do takes time and resources. Our jobs, kids, friends, events, partners, and even the small things like when my child wants me to kill a spider in the bathroom. I refer to the energy that you can spend as the fucks you can give. Therefore, it's incumbent upon you, as a man of vision and purpose, to manage every fuck wisely. We are the masters of our lives, so we have the privilege of deciding where we want to dispense those limited amounts of fucks on. Only we get to choose what is truly fuckworthy in our lives. When you drive to work and the asshole in the BMW cuts you off, you often choose to allocate those fucks to being frustrated, rather than accepting it and saving those fucks for something else. When a coworker makes a disparaging comment because you won't donate $10 to Donna and Accounting's fundraiser, you can dispense those fucks and comment back with your feelings, or you can go about your business in a zero fucks given kind of way and ignore her underhanded comment. To truly manage your fucks, you must first master self-control. Self-control. You know the asshole in the BMW who doesn't signal and cuts you off? You have two choices. Number one, throw a tantrum in your car, wave your middle finger about, flash your high beams before accelerating up to his bumper, giving away some of your limited fucks in the process. Number two, Utilize self-control and preserve your fucks for something more fuckworthy and do nothing. Option one burns up some of your limited fucks for the day and also applies stress to your body. Cortisol, stress hormone, is released in your body when something gets into your skin, making it catabolic. Whereas option two does nothing. Ultimately, mastering self-control and your emotion matters. Those who are world-class at their craft and pursue excellence are incredibly careful about managing their time, energy, and resources. Ultimately, you can't become the best version of yourself if you're constantly reallocating your energy to things which the energy and don't bring you closer to your goals, passions, and dreams. Where awareness goes, energy flows. Don Dapani. While this might seem like a simple notion, this idea was profound for me. I met Don Dapani, a monk, at his dinner event in Toronto, where he was booked as a keynote speaker. 
He sat there before us, legs crossed on the floor in full monk garb with beads and three white lines painted on his forehead. He was an unlikely character to speak to entrepreneurs running successful multi-million dollar businesses. He presented him to us as a Hindu priest with an Australian accent who had finished 10 years in a monastery in Hawaii. Entrepreneurs are notoriously prone to distractions and many have varying degrees of attention deficit disorder or ADD. They're like herding cats. This monk was there to help entrepreneurs understand the notion of what energy vampires are and how to manage their awareness to be more effective. Awareness, he explained, is like a glowing ball of light which moves around in your head. And when it comes to a particular area of the mind, then that area is lit up, which is where your energy then flows. So if awareness goes to a happy area of the mind, then it's where your energy is flowing. And if energy is flowing to the happy area of the mind, then it is also strengthening this area. In order to manage your thoughts, you understand that the biggest threat comes from all places or things that are energy vampires. These are usually people that will take up your time, drain your energy, leave you feeling exhausted from your encounter with them. The key word here is exhausted after your encounter. For more on that, search for How to Deal with Energy Vampires on my YouTube channel. Mastering Self-Control. So how do you master self-control? Self-control is perhaps the most powerful skill you can develop that will help you master a better life. When you learn how to manage your fucks and walk away from energy vampires, you exercise self-control and start preserving your fucks for truly fuckworthy things that make you happy in life. How do you know if something is fuckworthy? Simple. If the dispensing of the fuck helps make you or your loved one's lives better, then it's usually worth dispensing precious fucks on. Some might argue that this is a selfish or unkind way to navigate life. I propose that you reevaluate how serious you are about managing your energy if this is violated by my statement above. If the dispensing of said fuck drains you or your friends, then it's probably better to use self control and preserve your thoughts. Let me give you a perfect example. I dated some of mother once, and one of her core passions was dinner parties. She would invite guests that were exhausting to be around. My date had one friend that would berate, criticize, and judge everyone, including her husband. Her friend was a typical stay-at-home soccer mom with teenage kids who also had an exceedingly high opinion of herself. However, she was nothing more than an obese middle-aged woman expecting people to agree with her worldview. She was, in fact, an energy vampire, meaning that being around her was an emotionally draining experience. Simply put, there was no benefit to being in the same room as her. I knew that she set a terrible example of what an adult woman should be. I knew I didn't want to have my daughter around that energy. After I received a second invite from another dinner party, I declined, and as you expect, declining the offer offended my girlfriend, and she tried to create an argument out of it. I simply didn't take part. Thank you for the invite and ended the call. We didn't talk for a few days and she called me after the dinner event to apologize to me that her friend was an energy vampire. You see, when you exercise self-control, you manage your fucks better. When you become aware of who is an energy vampire in your life, you will be forced to make choices that may offend some people. Guess what? That's okay. A man that is on his purpose in life will inevitably rub some people the wrong way. Remember, if you value your fucks as a limited resource, you will only dispense them for things that are truly fuckworthy. How do you strengthen self-control? It's my belief that self-control is like a muscle, and the more you work it, the stronger it gets. One of the simplest ways to strengthen that self-control muscle is to do things that are physically difficult or challenging. If you're looking for a task to improve your self-control, then taking a cold shower for most people is hard, especially if you had access to hot water all your life. Hot water is a modern luxury, but for millions of years, we've been bathing in icy lakes and rivers. To take a cold shower requires self-control, but most people don't have the ability to do something basic like stand in uncomfortably cold water in a shower. I urge you to start taking cold showers for the following reasons. It strengthens your self-control. It also offers the following health benefits. Reduces brain fog and improved focus, improves circulation, keeps skin and hair healthy, strengthens the immunity system, improves energy and well-being, improves metabolism and fat ability. Do you want to improve your self-control and learn to manage your fucks better? Then start by doing something as simple as taking cold showers. It's easy to understand, simple to execute on, but takes discipline and willpower to build. I was speaking at a conference and closed off my talk speaking about managing your fucks. And somebody asked in the audience how they felt anxiety over dispensing their fucks and how to reserve them better. The bottom line is this. If you value your fucks as a resource that has a limit to it, then you will only allocate your limited fucks towards matters that truly deserve your fucks. The cold hard truth. Never forget the energy that you begin with every day. Okay, and the last few seconds is just a conclusion, but I think I've just destroyed my uh, monetization on this video for tonight because the whole thing was just all F this and F that. So anyway, let's just fucking carry on. <laughs> Um, yeah. So again, if you haven't got the book, get it, get the audible, whatever you, you know, prefer consuming. There's lots of great information in that. Go through that chapter over and over again until it sneaks in. The point needs to be made quite clearly, right? You have a limited amount of energy in a day to dispense for things that should be worthy of said energy. Um, I remember I mentioned spiders and I just, you know, jotted down a note because, my kids always like been afraid of spiders. It doesn't matter what I do. It's like, dude, like you're way bigger than the bugs. You shouldn't be afraid of bugs. She's afraid of bugs. It is what it is. I'm not going to expend my energy killing spiders, chasing bugs around. I got one of those, 
um, Dyson vacuums, you know, the rechargeable ones that go on the wall with a long neck and a pointy thing on the end. She just goes around sucking up spiders on her own now. So it's like, I didn't want to deal with it. I saw a problem like this. You deal with it. I'm not, I'm not lowering my myself. I'm not taking my energy level to things that don't deserve my energy. If you think that's such a problem, you deal with it. So there you go. That's just a small example, but you can, you can amplify that. You can use that in a number of different ways, right? I, I mean, you know, one of the things that I like to do is I just sort of kind of get into these zones from time to time. I go to a banya, you know, like a Russian banya. It's got sauna, cold plunges, hot tubs, steam rooms, all that kind of shit. And sometimes I'll just go on the cold plunge and it's cold as shit. Like it's, it's, it's very cold water and just sitting there just like, you just breathe. And all you're focusing on is air going in and air going out. And you can stay in there for quite a long time and it's quite uncomfortable, but you push yourself to limits. You know, that's what I'm saying. Like you have to condition your body to be more, uh, less fragile and more anti-fragile, if you know what I mean. Um, the weather was a little bit warmer this weekend. We had a bunch of snow last week. It was a lot warmer this weekend. I've got a hot tub underneath my deck and the deck's covered in snow. So between the cracks in the deck, water's melting and it's dripping. Sitting in the hot tub, you're just doing this, right? And, you know, maybe you can move around to an area of the tub where there's no water dripping on your head, but there's one seat that I like and it's like, you know, this is my seat. And there's water dripping on my head. I'm basically getting waterboarded while I'm trying to chill out in the hot tub and just enjoy the, you know, the air and just have a, a moment. You want to test yourself? That's that's a good example of a way, you know, for you to test yourself while you're getting waterboarded trying to chill in your own hot tub, right? You just sit there and you make a joke out of it. You know, you just sit there, breathe in, breathe out. Squirrels running across the fence. You know, you look at the snow pile up and, you know, the beauty of nature, you know, if you will, sort of thing. And you just don't let it bother you, right? This is how you condition yourself to deal with things that no, would normally solicit an emotional reaction from people. Um, I used to get pissed off when I was driving. I mean, like when I was talking in the book and sorry, in the audio version of the book about, you know, people cutting you off. There was a time where I was that guy where it's like, you know, you get cut off, and you hit the gas and you go up on them and you're like in the mirror and you just having a complete freak out on the horn and most of the time they wouldn't do anything they would just be like eh, okay whatever because they're sitting in their cage they're sitting in their glass studio you know their fish bowl and nobody can really touch them so they just don't care and when you realize that you know this is a limited energy supply which is what i learned from this monk Don Dapani. I mean, I think he's on social media. You can probably look him up if you want to kind of dive into his stuff a little bit. I know he does coaching and things like that. Uh, D-A-N-D-A-N-D-P-I, I think is how you spell it. He'll he'll come up. He's got three lines on his forehead, monk arm, stuff like that. Um, you know, he's basically like, you know, look, like you have a limited amount of energy. If, if, if you value something as an energy source, you don't just give it away, Right. The problem that people have when they when they have an emotional reaction to everything is because they think they have an unlimited supply of energy for everything in the world. And you don't, right? Like you have you have so much energy to deal with things. And I believe personally anyway, some may disagree with this, but you want to reserve that energy for things that have an ROI in your life, right? Return on investment for those of you that don't know what an ROI is. So that's my theory. You see it as a as something that's a, a commodity or something of value, a store of value, you know, if you will, you just don't go walking down the street with fat stacks of cash, just going like this. You just don't do it because you value cash. Everybody agrees that it has value, right? Everybody. You show somebody a, a $20 bill and you ask them what this is. And I guarantee a hundred percent of the people in the Western world, even guys that are bums on the street, you know, will say that's, that's $20, right? You go to a place like Africa in the middle of the Sahara and the Congo or the Amazon rainforest where they have no idea what money is, they're going to wipe their ass with it. But the vast majority of people that were to see it would all agree this is $20. And you know it's $20 and you know what it takes to make $20. So you're not going around like this. Wouldn't make any sense. If you treat your energy, if you treat your Fs, you know, your fucks as a resource, then guess what? Guy cuts you off. You don't do this. You know, Karen starts mouth mouthing off about where you put your shopping cart, you know, when you're in the parking lot, you don't do this. 
You know, your kid wants you to kill a, a spider. You don't do this. You know, you just retain it. And it's as simple as that. It's it's not a complex maneuver. It's actually quite like a lot of the concepts in life that guys like to complicate unnecessarily. I always say people complicate lives and justify why they do it. They, they overcomplicate everything unnecessarily. I can literally distill down just about anything that people complicate into a simple matter. And this is the easiest way, I'm telling you guys, the absolute easiest way for you to stop losing your shit over dumb stuff that doesn't require the attention that you're giving it. I'm telling you this. So we talked about the reason. And, you know, not to mention, guys, when you get pissed off, when you, you know, when you have a spaz, when you lose control of your emotions, it doesn't look good. It's a bad look on you. People don't, people don't respect you. People certainly don't respect men that throw hissy fits. They'll look at a guy that, that loses his shit. And like part of the reason why you see, uh, I mean, here's a ex very good example of somebody that was composed. It's a very uh, pr prolific uh, public figure. Um, probably a guy, I mean, I didn't like him as a president, but probably a guy like Barack Obama. Very well spoken, always composed, didn't lose his shit over anything. Even used things like amuse mastery, you know, when he was dealing with some some silly topics or questions that would come up, you know, sort of thing. Um, versus a guy like Bill Clinton, I did not have sex with that woman, right? Like just getting mad at, you know, stuff like that. Very like big, big contrast. Your body goes in a catabolic state, right? Your cortisol levels spike. You don't want that. You know, I mean, you want court, like healthy cortisol levels in the morning when you get up because that's kind of the stress hormone that like gives you the get up and go and want to tackle the world. Right. Um, but you don't want it, you know, spiking out, you know, throughout the day over random shit that pisses you off and your cortisol blows up. Another thing that I should probably mention, and I'm going to take some Q&A tonight, you know, as well, obviously, as I always do. But your hormone panel is something that you probably want to take a look at. If you're estrogen dominant, in your hormone panel as a dude, there's gonna, like you will have emotional outburst more than the average guy. I'm telling you right now. I mean, look, uh, symptoms of being estrogen dominant, a lot of belly fat, female breast tissue, um, patchy beard, like not able to grow a full beard sort of thing. Um, those, those are some pretty good telltale signs, right? You might wanna check your hormone panel. I mean, I've. I talk about managing your endocrine system in my book in one of the chapters in detail. And one of the things that I recommend guys should do from the age of about 30 up is getting a full hormone panel once a year. You know, check your cholesterols, check your uh, full hormones, uh, testosterone, free testosterone, SHBG, DHEA, DHT, estradiol, all the main things. You know, you check them all and just put in a file folder and keep it and, you know, see how your body's you know, doing, you might find when you're running your hormone panel that you're, that you might be estrogen dominant. I mean, if you're losing your shit over things far too often, you could be estrogen dominant. Um, if you're on therapeutic testosterone, for example, and you, and you have more body fat, you might be converting more, more testosterone into estrogen. The aromatase inhibitor lies in belly fat. And the more belly fat you have, the higher your conversions are going to be. You're only going to know these things if you're tracking it. Right. I mean, Generally speaking, it's not a good idea to be on an AI and aromatized inhibitor when you're on testosterone, but you might need it, right? Like it might be beneficial to calm your mood sort of thing. So you're not spazzing out over every little thing. That's it. Just, just make it a practice in your life not to dispense energy to things that are unworthy of your energy, right? People, look, with what I do with YouTube and social media and like the comments that I make, the way that I handle just about everything when it comes to um, you know, my social pr presence, obviously I'm a post and ghost guy. It's like, I have something to say, boom, done. I don't, I don't go reading, you know, like the 2,842 replies in a video from everybody, you know, and their mother, and they've got an opinion on everything. I like, why do I want to invite that in my life? Right. So it's like managing your time and your, you know, your energy. I spend time, you know, with the guys in my community, family, friends, um, any of the guys, I'm doing mentorship with you know for example that's that's where i reserve my energy for and and rightfully so because those people matter they matter right and i recognize who they are and wh what their place is recognize things and people that matter in your life and things that don't matter 
you go to the grocery store, you put your stuff in the, you know, your car, your truck, you put the buggy back. Somebody makes a, you know, random comment. You want to get drawn into some drama or you just want to look at them and be like, eh, and just keep going. Right. That's basically how I handle stuff. Eh. And, you know, people are going to call you names. Oh, Rich doesn't give a fuck. He's cold. Oh, you know, whatever. Whatever. I don't care. What color is your McLaren? Right. I don't give a fuck. Right. You have to have that attitude in, in life when it comes to a lot of things that are trying to suck energy from you. You know, they're called energy vampires. Okay. They just want to, it's, it's like they just want to draw it out of you. Some of these people actually get a rise out of it. Like they, like, they're like pigs in the mud. I've talked about this before, but it's worth mentioning again. There's a blog post. I wish I could remember the title of it, but James Altucher wrote it and he was talking about haters and how he deals with haters. And this was before I was doing anything, you know, on YouTube and, you know, socially, like aside from my debt company and writing some blog pieces and maybe doing a couple of small here and there, I, I had no, you know, large presence at the time. And I was reading his article on how to deal with haters because even then I was catching a little bit of hate and I was wondering, you know, like, why is that? Like, why do people do that? And he made a valid point. You know, he's like, haters are like pigs in the mud. They want to... They want you to get down to their level and roll around with them and get shit all over you so that you can be just like them. Think about it. He's right. That's why I say today, hate always comes from beneath. Nobody ever gets jealous of a loser. If a guy like Elon Musk wants to offer some advice or some criticism to me, then I look at it as criticism and I'll take a look at it. But if the pig in the mud wants me to get sucked into their little argument about whatever bullshit that's going on around in their world. I'm not interested. I don't have time to get in the mud with the pigs. Why? Why do you want to, why do you even want to entertain that? This is how you guys need to look at this topic. Mastering self-control for growth is going to require that you're going to have to become a little more stoic. It's going to require that you're going to have to, be, you know, change your demeanor and character and people are going to judge you for it. They're going to say, You've changed. Yeah, well, I won't get to where I want to go if I don't change. Now, will I? Right? That's okay. There's going to, now, to his point, because he also wanted me to mention the notion about anchors and sales. To that point, you know, there's going to be people that are going to fill your sales with wind and take you to the next port of call. And there's going to be people that are anchors that want to hold you in the anchorage so that you don't blow away or go anywhere. You have to recognize anchors and sales in your life, right? Allow, you know, when you want to go somewhere, which is what you should be doing throughout most of your life, right? <laughs> you need to move around. You need to go. You're going to want people to fill your sails with wind. And there's going to be people that you're going to have to cut off. You cut the anchor line and let it drop, right? You leave them behind. That's okay. That's, that's, that's how life is. Forget about this new wave, all-inclusivity fucking notion that we're all the same and equal and treat everybody and listen to what everybody has to say and listen to what they have to say. Fuck that. You don't have time for that if you're a man on a mission. If you're a guy with some purpose and a grind in your foot, like if you've got something going on, you don't have time to listen to nonsense or get into spit, spits and spats or run around your house killing spiders for your kids. Fuck that. Find ways to deal with it that serve you so that you're not dispensing energy on things that don't deserve energy. You're like, what is your price point? What are you worth? You know, if you're worth X amount of dollars per hour, think about it. If, if somebody wants to suck, suck you into something, if Karen comes along or whatever the male equi equivalent of a Karen is, I don't know what that is. We're going to have to come up with some name for that at some point. But if a Karen comes along and tries to suck you into some nonsense or a spat or a fight or an argument or something, What's your billable rate? What's your hour worth? Is it worth, like, are, are you going to be compensated for that? You have to look at your energy as, as a commodity. It's got to have value to you. So put a price on it. Put a value on it and dispense it to in, in scenarios and things and with people that are worth that. Simple as that. You do that, you start cutting off the anchors, filling your sails with the wind, going to where you want to go. And not wasting energy on dumb shit that's going to sidetrack you. How many times have you know you gotten into something that's gotten you into trouble? I know people that have not been able to control their emotions and gotten involved in lawsuits that have ended up in the backseat of police cars that have been maybe incarcerated because they weren't able to control their emotions. 
So you think about it, you know, you think about what the value of your energy is, put a price on it and only dispense it on, on things that are worthy of it. Sold, done, case closed, over, kaput. You know what I'm saying? Um, here, I'm going to grab the invite link because we're going to take uh, some questions now. There's really nothing else to cover on that. It's, it's a, you know, it's a really straightforward topic, I believe anyway. Uh, so join in and ask a question and there's a stream yard link there so you guys can pile in i'll pin that to the top of youtube if you're again watching this elsewhere on the interwebs doing it wrong come over to my youtube channel subscribe and watch over there i'll drop the link in all chat for youtube so get your asses over there um somebody puts a question over here i wanted to grab um what percent does the human life expectancy drop to i don't know what that question means what does it drop to if you don't take care of yourself it's going to drop pretty quick maybe he's asking the question about how much your life expectancy might drop over stress i'll tell you something i don't know any old people that are that are stressed out anybody i know that's like over 70 or 80 they're pretty chill they're pretty chill I don't know like a high strung 90 year old that's all like getting pissed off at everything and wigging out at shit. They're like, look, I'm just pointing to facts. You guys can see the exact same things I can. You probably have better vision than I do, right? Let's see what else we got here. Uh, okay. All right, we got some people starting to pile in. I'm gonna uh, run the, uh, the ad reel. Uh, oh, by the way, the Alpha T is uh, back in stock. We had to restock it, so it's back in stock. There's a fresh batch in the warehouse. Here you guys go. We'll be back in a minute to change. This episode is brought to you by the Unplugged Alpha Supplements and Grondike Soap Company. Brothers, if you're like me and you take what you put in your body seriously, you'll want to use the Unplugged Alpha Supplements. An obsession with absorption is what sets this line apart from the others. You want to make sure that you absorb as much of the supplements as possible so you don't end up peeing out expensive urine. My supplement line is made in the United States from the highest quality domestic ingredients. And unlike cheaper supplements from China in plastic bottles, mine ship in dark glass bottles to keep your supplements fresher, longer, and won't seep endocrine disrupting plastics into your supplements. Nothing is a hard tablet. Everything is in an easily digestible, bioavailable capsule. You can filter all products by various categories, including testosterone support, estrogen metabolism, fat burning, immune health, sleep support, and performance. Visit theunpluggedalpha.com forward slash shop and use the subscribe and save option to get 10% off your supplement orders or use coupon code alpha10 for 10% off a one-time order to try it out. Then I use tactical soap and God of War beard oil every day. Tactical soap is a handmade product made in the United States from ingredients you can actually pronounce, not conventional endocrine lowering toiletry chemicals. Both the soap and the beard oils are infused with bioidentical pheromones that are designed by a clinical psychologist and pheromone expert to maximize attractiveness to the opposite sex. Go visit coopersoap.com and get 10% off your order today. Guys, check out my website at richcooper.ca for more information on booking me for coaching, my community, my courses, and a whole bunch more. You can also find all the useful links pinned below in the top YouTube comment of all my videos. Now let's get on with the show. All right. All right. <clears throat> all right. Let's do this. Uh, let's give it to, and guys, when you pile in, there's a private chat. Just let me know in the private chat what it is you want to talk about and help me uh, sort through the, the guests that want to ask a question tonight. We got Brendan here. We'll give him a, a shot first. What do you got for me tonight, Brendan? Hey, Rich. How you doing? Good. Um, I'm trying to figure out if this business that I'm currently investing my time into is truly fuckworthy. Um, my current situation is I'm making a move to California to pursue an education and I'm working off some debt that I paid for mentoring mm -hmm. and I'm running into like a, like a lot of issues with what I've been doing and I'm just considering maybe I should just find more guaranteed work because the time that I'm putting in at least in this like cycle, it's just it's just not yielding a lot back, um, and so I'm you're trying to in figure Hawaii. out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you're going to California for school. Yeah, uh, recently I I had dreams to be here, build a studio, make content, 
And then mm-hmm. I recently just had a pretty like rough breakup and um, the, my dream just kind of sizzled out and I got support to go to get an education. Okay. How old are you? 24 recently. What's the business that you're running? I help um, rappers stand out with custom exclu- uh, exclusive beats and saxophone. So you have like royalty free music or is it, you know, music people are buying off you? So people basically, um, they have their, they, they basically work with me directly to get their own unique sound out to help them stand mm-hmm. out from everyone else. And they implement saxophone and uh, typically people do love it. It's just okay, not a lot of people have money. And, okay. You know. So what's the problem that we're trying to solve here? If I should keep on focusing on this business or just like maybe just pivot into is it making money. Yeah. Um, uh, maybe like hasn't gotten any pay in fulls. It's like a high ticket setup, but it's just a couple of deposits here and there, like a hundred. But, uh, so it's a hobby. Yeah. Cause a business makes money. A hobby doesn't make money. A hobby is something you do for fun. By the way, the way, you know, you want to run a business and life. And I talk about this in my course, the school of entrepreneurship, you love doing it. You're good at it. And it makes money when those three things intersect in the middle is where the gold is, right? So you're, so you're missing a significant portion of it because yeah, you like it. I don't know if you're good at it, but I mean, you like it, but, but it doesn't make you money. So what's the point? It's just a hobby. How long have you been doing it? Um, this model business or like the music production? Well, what you're doing to try to make money with the business? How long have you been doing it? About nine months. I got sidetracked with drama from the previous breakup. And then like, I've been really trying to kick in in the next, the past couple like past month. Okay, so for nine months, all that you have to show for it is a hundred dollar deposit, was it? Probably like four or five hundred dollars of deposits that actually okay. didn't even pan out to the fulls. Okay, so none of them panned out. Then did you have to do a refund or, or did you keep the deposit? Um, I've kept them because they like the people I've worked with, they're they're not really professional. They're just like, never mind. So okay. but yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I, I look, mm-hmm. I mean Going to California, don't like it. What are you taking for school there? Um, I'm focusing into business and uh, MIS, which is like information systems. Why in California? I mean, I'm I know from, it's closer to Hawaii, but... I'm from there, originally. Okay. Yeah. W- watching my content doesn't usually tell me that you kind of lean in that political direction, though. Political direction? left um yeah i would say so um, yeah so i mean it, again it brings me back to the question of why you're choosing a place like california now th- this this program that you're taking it, it's like is this considered stem um yeah actually it is um it's part of technology and what kind of job do you do when you get it, get this degree and you can go out into the real world and work business analyst um and uh data analyst and then it it can branch into like management of computers and um information systems which is around 90 to 150k and above um typically from what i've heard is they can branch into different um c-suite jobs or even like entrepreneurs which i'm trying to network with other people so why aren't you doing this with this little hustle business that you're doing? Like, why aren't you doing information or technology or computers right now? Like, why are you, you know, producing music? It's been a passion. So you're not Something passionate that... for, for computers then, and information technology and analyzing data. And it's more of an interest. I, I've been interested in like improving biz- businesses in that regard. Like I'll see that, okay, maybe it can be better here. Like in previous jobs I've had. Yeah. Um, you see why I'm asking all these questions, right? Like, I, yeah. I don't know if you guys in the chat can see it, right? Like, what are you taking from all that? Um, I, I, I It's probably a little, <laughs> I, it sounds like I'm spread out. What'd you say? Well, here's my concerns. I mean, you're moving to a place that isn't particularly friendly to men, strong, masculine, you know, virtuous men anyway. Um, you're taking a course and a program into something that might be considered STEM, but it's in an area that you don't really have a lot of genuine interest in because, you know, by default, this, this, uh, business, the side hustle that you tried to build was in the music space, right? So there's a couple of things that 
I see there that might be in your blind spots that you may not be seeing. So I just wanted to point those out to you so that you start paying attention to them and maybe listen to your intuition a little bit more. I don't know what's right for you, dude. Like, you know what's right for you. It just doesn't sound like a lot of the stuff that you're describing doesn't really add up to me. Mm -hmm. Okay. No, I, I, um, I will definitely take a, take a look at all that as well. I originally had an interest to go into LA and pursue the music thing there, but, mm -hmm. um, with like current debts and stuff that I was like facing, it just wasn't really, like really working out. So it kind of just took well, look, that, No, 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 no. That's just a cope. Look, the we live in a in a practically permissionless world today. You don't need anybody's permission to become an influencer at all. You don't need anybody's permission to be a comedian. You don't need anybody's permission to be a musician. You can create whatever you want. I press the same upload button that you would on YouTube as Casey Neistat does. Right. If I was musically inclined, I could upload to the same place on SoundCloud, you know, as my favorite uh, EDM, you know, artist does his thing. So, you know, saying, oh, you know, I want to do this and I want to do that, but I couldn't. It's like, dude, you go back 30 years and you have this conversation with a guy that wanted to be a musician or a streaming didn't even exist. Podcasts, you know, didn't exist. There was no option. Like you have all these unlimited options today where you can do what you want with what you like and what you're good at and make money at it. Mm -hmm. so, so it sounds like, it's I mean, if music is up. your thing, then why aren't you pursuing something in music? In college or, or just that's in what life, I'm doing in, like, in life. Look, I'm not a big fan of, you know, college and university for the most part, unless it's STEM in, in something that you like and it's in a field that's going to pay well. I think it's a waste of time. Uh, Chris put this in the chat here. He says, take the cash you'll spend on school and burn it for heat. You'll get more benefit. Start a business and get real experience. I've said to guys lots of times ago, you know, if you're going to spend 10, 20 grand on a semester or whatever it happens to cost you, delay it, you know, for one year, take that money and go and spend it on trying to start a uh, business up and get, and get something off the ground. Mm -hmm. Right. You'll learn a lot more doing that than what you will in a classroom, listening to somebody lecture you about stuff that probably won't even be relevant when you graduate. Just saying. Yep. True. True yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right, Brendan. Okay. Thanks, give it man. look. All I'm saying is give it some critical thought and ask yourself some, you know, some questions like, okay, well, why? Well, why am I doing this? Okay, then why am I going to do that? Right? Does it like is it aligned with your goals or is it aligned with the goals of somebody else? Because somebody else is saying, you know, you better do this or else. I don't know. All I'm saying is ask some questions about why. Because a lot of stuff about you know what you're talking about here, it leads me to believe that you know, things are not aligned. You're not in balance. If, if you know what I'm saying. Cool. Cool. Sounds good. All right, man. Thank you. Have a good one. Thanks. Um, again, guys, when you come into the private area in the uh, private chat, let me know what it is you want to talk about so I can pull you in. And if you want to join in and ask a question tonight, like our friend Brendan just did the join in and ask a question link is at the top of the YouTube pinned it's a, it's a stream yard like you'll see it up over there right um doo -doo -doo. who's the other guy that wanted to ask a question here rationality rationality nick all right nick you're up buddy hey rich how you doing good what's your question tonight i have a couple of questions the first one is uh, what i wrote in and um, i sometimes have a really hard time of distinguishing between when i'm being rational and when i'm rationalizing some emotional or a cop-out thought and i wanted to know if you have some kind of system to difference between the two with everything with money so, women, life decisions so what's the difference between having rational thoughts and copping out i find it really hard to be a brute, like really honest and difference in between when i'm honest with myself and when i'm when i'm not when i'm just taking some well, I think thought. it's a cop out when you're misaligned with with your goal, you know, with your own point of origin, right? It's um, you know, you're attracted to a girl, she looks your way, maybe smiles a little bit, but then you're like, "Ah, I'm not wearing the right clothes to go and approach her." Or I'm not feeling good today. So that's your cop out, right? Like you going and making that approach and opening her up and saying, "Hey, how you doing?" sort of thing. 
you know, would be, would have been aligned with, you know, your own mental point of origin going where you want to go. That's just using a gal as an example. You know, you can apply that to money or whatever else. Like, can you give me an example? So I understand it a little bit better. Uh, I can give you an example, but it, I really wanted to have a more general like system to defer between the two because examples will always sound like easier to to just tackle. But even like last year, like six months ago, I moved from a small city. I lived with my parents. I'm 23 right now. And I moved from a small city to a big city because there's more opportunities and more girls and everything. And mm -hmm. um, I thought it would like be good, but... I'm introverted. Very quickly, the business I started to start here didn't pan out, and the weather is here awful. A lot of traffic, people, and I just think about the money I spent for rent and all that stuff. I could save it up and live with my parents. Okay, well, I hear a lot of rationalization right there. So I can tell you by default that's that's what you're doing because you're just basically rambling on about I did this, I did that, and this is why I did it, and that's why I did it. Like, don't don't do any of that like nobody cares about that story you know women especially don't care about your struggles they hang out at the fishes finish line and they pick the winner right so like nobody cares so save that people people want to see results people want to see you know um like like answers to questions you know sort of thing so give yeah, them you and... don't always you don't always know which decision will lead to better results so i'm trying to differ rational decision making and like We'll start. Making. We'll start making decisions. Are you making decisions? Yeah, I made a bunch of decisions, and when they didn't pan out, I, I asked myself, "Where did the pivot. rational, logical one?" Pivot. So if you made some bad decisions, pivot. Okay, just like that. Just like that. Okay. Now, as you start pivoting and you make course, like when, when the guy with the um, stinger missile, you know, locks on a. A plane and he hits the button and then the missile shoots out it's got a guidance system in it right it's gonna it's gonna track and it has to continuously make course corrections that's how these things analyze you know and create solutions to problem it's over there i need to pivot this way it's over there i need to pivot a little bit more adjust thrusters angle vectors whatever that's what you got to do in life man like you have to you have to spot a target okay my target is this i don't know let's use money you know, as an example, you know, my target is I want to make a million dollars a year. Okay, well, are you heading in that direction? No. Okay, well, what things do you need to do to start heading in that direction? Are you being pushed off that course? Okay, well, let's course correct and get back on the course. It's, it's not that complicated, right? Like, you just have to make these course corrections on the way. It sounds to me like you're afraid to make them, though. Like, how do I do it? Like, the thing that, that you guys have to understand, and I get this a lot, you know, people that call in, is you have to get better at making, you know, taking ownership and making decisions. And it's not entirely your fault for not doing it because I know the world's pussified you with the way things have been going over the last couple of decades, but you really have to see it for what it is. And nobody's going to come and save you. You have to take accountability for yourself. You make a bad choice. Fine. Made a bad choice. Let's go in this direction right now. Let's course correct. Let's get to the bottom of it. You're, you're a problem solver as a man. Men solve problems. Do it more. Yeah. You see what I'm saying here? But yeah, I see what you're saying. It's not complicated, but it's definitely it's not. hard sometimes. It's, that's why I, I like wonder. It's not. You know, like, I I make mistakes in life, too. I don't get results that I want in life, too, right? But the reason why I get closer and closer and every year is better and better for me, and I'm going li to live a long life, too. I just found out today. I have my DNA analyzed. I get into the weeds with a lot of things. Like, I geek out especially on stuff with, you know, self-care with stuff like sleep or training or supplementation. Like I geek out in a lot of different areas. And when I find that I'm, you know, my goal is to go here and do something and I'm not getting it. It's like, okay, well, why, why am I not getting it? What am I doing wrong? The target's over there, but I'm in this direction. Let's, you know, how do I get it over there? It's not as simple as, you know, when you're in a sailboat and you want to go over there and you're off 10 degrees, you just make a course correction, 10 degrees, and it gets back on course. You have to figure out what each of those little degrees happen to be. Maybe you need to get up earlier. Maybe you need to work harder. Maybe you need to focus more. Maybe you need to get rid of some losers in your life. Each, like each one of those little things that's pushing you off course are just things that you sort of have to identify and be like, doesn't serve me. It's not aligned with my goals. Fuck off. See what I'm saying? Yeah. I understand. yeah. I had a, another just question. Be I decisive, make mistakes, and course correct. Okay. Ask another right. question real quick. 
No, I got a lot of people waiting, and I usually take about five to ten minutes, you know, per person. So I'm gonna have to let you go, but you can call back another okay. time. Okay. Okay. Thank right? you, Thanks, yeah. man. All right. Just think like a missile, bro. Yeah, pretty much. Um, all right, let's see what else we got here. Selfish with dating. Who's that? Selfish with dating. Elijah the Dom. Okay. Elijah. What's up? What's up? Uh, I got a question. So go. When you were like 20, <laughs> I'm 25. Let me get you to speak up a little bit because you're a little bit low on the volume. When you were like 20, year when you were, think back when you were in your 20s, like, okay. and you had like a, a lot of women, and like, like I have a problem with like dating. Like I don't want to, like I have certain women who I can just bring to like my house, and I just like, but like these these are like you know quick and fast, good or good looking girls, but. It's like quick, fast type of girls. And I haven't been on a date in like a very long time because like I just don't like the whole... Because you don't need to. Pay for your meal and just to get to know you. You know what I'm saying? Like I can't... But then I feel like I'm selfish because I'm trying to find like a kind of LTR type of situation. So... How old are you? I'm 25. Why do you want a long-term relationship? Because I feel like I've been through the whole like the whole herd <laughs> and i feel like there's no i feel like yeah i feel like i've seen everything that i could see in the single life so now i'm like i feel like what do you maybe, um what are you doing with your life right now like you're working or you're in school yeah uh, i'm working right now it's not like a i work at a google data center so i mean it's a nice it's, a, it's not like entrepreneurship but mm -hmm. it's a nice you like it gig. It's all right. I'm trying to get into like the fitness scene, but for right now, it's okay. pretty cool. Does it pay well? It does. It does. It, it does all right. I mean, it's just not okay. what I want to do. Like, it's not what I want to do every day for the rest of my life. You know? So why aren't you focusing on that? Why is this? Why I is am, this call in? Like why, like why are you using my genius brain power to deal with a question around an, a girl? Why aren't, why aren't we using my genius brain power on that? Because I like that a lot better as a, a topic. We can deal with a girl thing in a minute. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I'm moving I'm moving to Texas in May. So, I'm, yeah, I'm getting all that prepared, you know, um, so I could be in the fitness things. It's more right now the state I live in is a super small town type of state. Mm -hmm. So, now I'm trying to move to like move to Dallas, Texas. And, okay. So, yeah. there's a conflict right there. Because your because your first question is LTR, right? Selfish LTR. How do I get that sort of thing? But yeah. your plan is to leave town anyway. So what are you going to do? You're going to bring her with you. You're going to tell her to get lost. Like this is a this is a cart before the horse sort of thing, right? Like your yeah. your purpose, your mission in life should be your priority. And if and if that and if part of that strategy is moving to Texas, the last thing on your mind should be how do I get a girlfriend. Right. Um, see what I'm saying? I see what you're saying. Don't you have a girlfriend right now? Like, isn't it nicer yeah. than when you're spinning plates? It's got advantages and disadvantages. Um, <laughs> it's it's going to be more work than spinning plates. Like I'll tell you that. I mean, you know, to deal with an LTR, you got to have better game than spinning plates. Spinning plates is easy, especially for a good looking guy like you, because you know you're just calling him up, and be like, "Yo, come over." There's no dinners, no dancing, <laughs> no flowers. There's no Valentine's Day. Yeah. It's Elijah the Don, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. So you think no, like, you think LTRs in your 20s are like a waste of... Generally speaking, the consensus, you know, seems to be from those that have unplugged that your 20s should be spent building yourself up, laying the foundation for your life, becoming, like, building the man that you want to become. Because men are made, women are just born. Like, you know... A woman's job is not to be promiscuous and preserve her beauty. A man's job is to make something out of himself. And you're working a nice job that pays you well, but you don't really like and you're planning on moving anyway, right? So maybe there's something else for you on the horizon, but you don't want to get yourself into a position where you're in a soul-sucking job for the rest of your life. So there's got to be something out there, something else out there for you. Is 
it sounds to me like you've already figured that out. But yeah. don't yeah, think yeah. for a second that a woman is going to get you there. I just feel like I'm wasting time. Like I'm not talking to that many girls, but like same time, like it's like if I if I have like a good week, or I had a good like good week in fitness, good week in work, you know, I feel like I'm wasting time trying to call a girl, tell her to come over, grab condoms. Like, <laughs> let me ask you a question: know? What does your dad say when you talk to him about this? He's uh, my dad's a little plugged in, Rich. So <laughs> he's telling me that to get an LTR. Get an LTR. Yeah, it's not yeah. good. It's not a good. I would. Course. I would say, I would say, figure out women before you get an LTR, and don't rush into an LTR. Let let her like. Okay, here's a, here's a couple of pro tips for a guy like you because you're obviously spoiled for choice. You don't have a problem, you know, dealing with women. They'll come over. Wham bam, see you later. Bye. There's no dinner. There's no dancing. There's no flowers. Okay, you don't have a problem getting the attention of women. You need to figure out what dealing with women on a long-term basis is going to look like for you. But you want a chick that's going to choose you. So so choose a woman that's chosen you, one. She's going to have to be the one that comes at you and, and, you know, is like, Elijah, dig your vibe. You know, I don't want to share you with anybody. I want to claim you. Where do we stand? You know, have her open that conversation. And then you can set the terms of the relationship, you know, as you see fit. You know, you can decide how it's going to look for you at that point in time. But... That's really all that it really should be for a guy like you. I mean, spin plates, let the cream rise to the top. Um, you know, if you want an LTR, fine. You know, do it if that's what you think is, you know, going to serve you. The advantages are you don't have, you don't waste a ton of time dealing with just random bimbos that fill up your days with drama and texting and why aren't you talking to me and all that kind of bullshit. You don't like that's the advantage to an LTR. Spinning plates yeah. takes up a lot of time. Dealing with a woman in a long-term basis in a relationship is going to take up your game. You're going to have to have good game to deal with a woman on a long-term basis because there, there are interests and, you know, the way that, like, it's all fun and games for the first little bit. You're banging all the time, 17 times a day. You're, you know, you're having a good time. There's no arguments. There's, there's nothing. Nothing. Everything's great, yeah. right? <laughs> Five, six, 12 months down the road. There's, there's always some bullshit that comes up that you don't deal with, you know, when you're spinning plates. So, like I said, there's yeah. advantages and disadvantages, but your, but your primary objective, because look, let's be honest, if you want to get hot, like Leo, Leonardo DiCaprio does it at, at 48, okay? He's dating a 19-year-old. The, the, the internet blew up today because Leonardo DiCaprio is dating a 19-year-old. They're calling him all kinds of names because he's got a preference for younger gals right? It's not difficult in any stage of your life to get beautiful, attractive women to enter your frame, be a compliment to your life, you know, da, 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 all that good stuff. Where it makes a big difference for you and for all of those outcomes is when you've got yourself squared away. Leonardo DiCaprio can do that because he's Leonardo the motherfucking DiCaprio. He's that guy. And he does it over and over and over. And that's his reputation. People knows that's who he is. No trouble whatsoever. Right? Yeah. Don't you think there's like a risk to spin in place though? Because like there's a little bit of risk. There's, of course there's risk. You could get me too. You know, she could make up some bullshit. You could get a, you get an STD. You could knock her up. You know, there's all kinds of risks. Of course there's risk. Yeah. I'm, look, I've never said chase girls. When have you ever heard me say chase the girls? Chase the girls. I've never said that. What do I say? Chase excellence, not women. Yeah. Women are fine and dandy. They're wonderful. They can be a great compliment to your life. Your boys aren't going to take care of you when you get sick. Trust me. A chick will. Yeah. If yeah. she loves you, if she's chosen you, if she respects you, a chick will. Your boys won't do that, right? But for you to have the option of having that chick in your life and retaining her, being the best that she can get, needs to be part of your objective not for her not to keep her but for yourself so you're spoiled for choice she ever gets out of line she loses her you know she just becomes somebody that you need to dis disassociate from you can be like fine i'm out i have options i'm good okay that's my take on it i mean look you're gonna do what you're gonna do you're gonna go chasing you know the ltr if if i could go back in a time machine and i was you this is the conversation that I would have with myself asking the very same question. Chase excellence, not women. 
women, you know, let them be a, a compliment to your life, invite them in your life if you want, if that's what you really want. But, you know, plan, plan your life out better so that it's questions like, how do I get the most out of my life? How do I get to where I want to be? Right? Yeah. All right. What does the best version of myself look like? Yeah, I got a few more. All right. I got a few. Yeah, we'll be there. All right. All right. Thank you. Man. Let me know how you make out, man. Yeah, I'll call you back. Okay. All right. Okay. We've got lots of guys waiting here to hop in. If you guys want to ask a question, the join link is in the chat. Um, got some, got some good ones tonight. Got some good ones tonight. I, I'm guessing my editor is going to make some decent clips out of that bunch. DL Saints in the house. Great advice. Keep things from the front. He's in the, he's in the, uh, he's in the waiting area too. So let me grab him in here real quick. Uh, He's mentioning how should weak men seek help? What's up, man? What's good, brother? How you feeling? I'm feeling amazing today. Thank you for asking. I thought you'd be feeling fucking amazing, my brother. <laughs> With all the f bombs you didn't drop tonight. <laughs> fucking amazing. There you go. You know what I mean? You, you don't lose a lot of taste. You get the most of it. Listen, bro. Um, the reason I was asking about how should weak men seek uh, help? There's there's a story going on that broke a few weeks ago. This dude from Texas, uh, going through a divorce, father of three, gets divorced, is getting wrecked. Uh, goes goes on Tinder, sets his parameters for for Colombia, meets a woman in Bogota. Uh, long story short, this woman winds up in a suitcase. Right he now, put her in a suitcase. He, yeah, after he, after he deleted her, he put her in a suitcase. It's a very horrific okay. story. Okay. Now. When I look at this, right, I, I, you know, I've been talking to a buddy of mine who's, you know, we're, we're best of friends. Like, he's always down there. I'm always with him. We, we go to Medellin. You know I me. Mean? I don't really go to Bogota that much, but that's not the point. The point is this. Here's a guy who went through this. He, he got wrecked. He got wrecked mm -hmm. in the system. It is what it is. He immediately goes out. He latches on to this beautiful young woman in a different country, different soil. He doesn't understand how it works. He's lost in his emotions. He loses it. She loses her life. He's lost his. Rightly so. We should. You know, they don't have the death penalty there. Uh, they caught him in Panama. He was trying to make his way to a country where they had, had no extradition with America or uh, mm. Colombia, and they they got it. They should. But when I deal, with, I see you see some of these guys out here in this space, like you said, the Mano Swamp is full of these guys who are hurt. They're weak. Uh, they they can they can pull themselves out of it, but I mean, you can just tell them, okay, go seek help. But what type of help? Yeah. I mean, this is this is one level of help. But some people really need to sit down with pros. You know what I mean? Um, how, how do you handle this, bro? Because I, I want to make sure I guide I people the correct way. I don't, honestly. You just stay, you stay I mean, out of it? Yeah, look, I mean, if somebody comes at, like, I do this in two formats. So I do live shows, obviously, and people call in. And, you know, the deal, I, I keep forgetting to put up the banner. Put up the banner, right? Yeah. There we go. Yeah, do the same Q&A banner, banner in yeah. the bottom, right? Callers waive all rights to privacy on this public call and show, blah, blah, blah. If you need private coaching, book me. Okay. So I have so so I have two ways that I run this stuff. It's like, you know, you call on my show, I get the content, you get the free answers, or if you need me privately, do that. Aside from that, I've got 1,200, uh, you know, videos on my channel. I got a book. I've got lots of resources out there that are helpful and useful to people, but I can't force you to, like, I can't, like, I can walk the horse to the water. I'm not going to make it drink. Right. So there's 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 broken people out there. Right. Like there is a contingent of society that is going to lose their shit, go to a different country, put a gal in a suitcase. Sucks. OK, sad. You know, it's sad for him. It's sad for his kids because they're not going to have a father. It's sad for the gal that ended up in the suitcase. It's just shit. Right. The world has shitty people. It's just a fact of life. You you can't. The best way to fix the world, in my opinion, is to. Become the best version of yourself. Let that seep into the, your inner network, you know, your inner perimeter. Because I always say, you know, you, you know, you're going to draw these perimeters. You know, you've got your inner circle, the people that you love the most. That's like the first rank, family, friends, that sort of stuff. Seep it into their lives, improve their lives, and then let those concentric rings keep going and, you know, see what you can do. But the random guy in some random country that did some random shit that was awful, terrible. Sucks, but th but there's good news out there today. There's something good that happened, right? There's a lot of yeah. positivity in the world too, and I think that a lot of people get 
you know, caught up on like, well, how do I fix men and how do I get these weak men, you know, the help that they need? And it's like, a lot of them don't want it, man. A lot of them are just happy with where they're at. And some of them just go batshit crazy. And there's right. nothing that you they can do it do here in America, that. too. I'm sure they do it in Canada. They do it everywhere. It just this happened to go down in Colombia. We have horrific stories right here in the good old USA on both sides, yeah. not just men, but women as well. But I, I just thought I'd because in my mind, I mean, when I meet some guys that I think they're on that spectrum, I just tell them to go get professional help. I like, guess nothing I can tell you. You know what I mean? I can, you know, I'm always plugging your book. I think it's one of the best books I've read in a long time, bro. Like it's right to the point. I'm always plugging your book, but this is way beyond that. You, you know what I mean? Like if you get, you get red rum on your mind like that and you going there's, out here. There's weird people you know, out there, DL. There's just some weird people. And like, what are you going to do? I, I like, I'm not, I'm not a, a, a trained expert in dealing with weird people. Shit. I'm a trained, like I am, I, I am an expert in getting shit done. I am an expert in pointing to facts. I am an expert in um, helping people assess shit that's sitting in their blind spots that they're not seeing. All right. I can show you stuff that's in your blind spot that you're not seeing. But if you don't like okay. what I show you or you don't want to do anything with it, I got nothing for you, man. Go get the help that you need. And just, yeah, and you just know? be done with it. All right. I, that's what's up, bro. Because I was just, again, I, I'm new to this. I'm, I'm in these trenches out here. Like I, I'm just a, I'm just an old warrior, bro. When I, this sort of stuff, I'm just like, you know, rub some dirt on it, man. I don't care. Is your bone sticking out? Then you're fine. Let's move forward. If your bone ain't sticking out, eh. but you know, that's, but you know, that's, <laughs> that's a default attitude that I would recommend, you know, that you use then, right? It, like stop being a fucking bitch and just fix it. Like, you know, it, it's incumbent upon men to make something out of themselves and do the work. It's not, you know, cry about it. Nobody gives a shit about your struggles as a man. Women hang out Especially at the finish women. line and they pick the winners, right? So yes. suck it up, buttercup, and do the damn work. And people don't want to hear that. You know, I like I piss people off when I say that. Legitimately. You, like if you go back to the comments afterwards, they're usually not in a live chat because these nerds come afterwards. And then oh, you're disconnected. You don't know what you're talking about. Bro, what color is your that. McLaren? You know? There you go. <laughs> I've and I've seen I've seen that in your in your comments. I've seen that. It's like well, yeah, and there's nothing you can do about that. And the term we use when do? I was once upon a time, yeah, guys like hey man, who keep pushing forward. That's what we do. You know what I mean? Mission here's, first, get it done. All right. Here's the thing, you know, I'll state this right now because if those people are out there, which they always are, why don't you call in on my live show with a better solution to a problem that I've addressed? If you think you have a better way of handling something, or you think that I'm wrong. Come on with your better solution. Let's chop it up. I want to hear it. I want to hear how you would fix this problem. And quitting is not the way that you fix problems, by the way. You're right about that. And I would just add one more. To, to, I tell these people, and I want to see your real face. I don't want to see a Mickey Mouse emoji or whatever the hell you got up there. <laughs> Be man enough to show me your real face. I'm here, I'm here like in me. Tampa. Yeah, bro. It's like, look, man, we come see me. You know what I mean? But that comes from a different word. I'm trying to get better, bro. I appreciate your time, man. Thank you very much. Thanks, man. Have a good one. Thank you. <clears throat> um, transitioning to an entrepreneur. Fix my game. Fix my game. Let's do the entrepreneur question first, and then we'll do the game question. Uh, oh, no, that guy's gone. Okay. And then let's do the game. Ba Batu. Batu. I'm going to totally pronounce your name wrong, dude, but how do I pronounce your name? Tell me. Uh, Bautista. I'm from Argentina. Argentina. Can you just mute yeah. the YouTube in the background? Yeah, thanks. Okay. Yeah, I just muted. Hi, Rich. Right, what do you got me I, in read Argentina? Your, I read your book, amazing book. It has taught me a lot, and I uh, pretty changed my mind and my view of the world with your book because now I'm red pill. Uh, the thing is, uh, I read your book. You address four points. You need to fix your status, your game. Uh, your pocket and your uh, physique. I already have the physique. I'm working on this uh, on the gym uh, five times a week. I need to uh, fix my game urgently because I don't have a. I suck with women. I suck at making the first approach. I don't know why to, uh, how to talk. What do you mean by fix your game? And, so what's wrong with your game? Uh, I don't know how to game. Uh, basically, that. So what? So what problems are you having? Uh, I don't know how to make the approach with women. I don't. I don't think I have a higher SMB. I have. I think my SMB is like 
five in the SMB market value. Mm-hmm. So I know I, I can't pull up a, a lot of girls, but my okay. solution. Okay, so let's deal with one thing at a time. So why do you rate yourself a five out of ten? Okay. We got, we got mom coming in the room. <laughs> I'm guessing this is probably one of the problems here. This is excellent. This is happening live on the show. Uh, sorry. Right. Okay. So, okay. So, who was the gal that just walked in the room? My mother. Okay. All right. Okay. So, how old are you? Uh, 20. 20. Okay. So, you live at home with mom, mom and dad? Uh, yes, mom and dad. I'm my brother. Okay, so, too. okay. So, one of the components of game is having some boundaries and having some frame in your life and your mom just walked just waltzed right into your room didn't knock on the door hey is it okay if i walk in just straight in blah 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 doesn't matter that you're on a live stream with you know hundreds of people watching just blah 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 blah, right yeah i know sorry uh well Well, the approach that's a boundary right like like this is this is one of the sorts of things that you need to establish like a conversation that i would be having with her after this is like hey look I respect that this is your house, but this is my room. And I was on a live show asking a, a, a question that was going to generate some value in my life. And you just waltzed into my room, right? Okay. You can't yeah, be doing right. that. You need to be knocking on the door if you need to come in, right? So okay. like, you know, these are some small things that you can do, my friend, which will, which will allow you to, you know, assert yourself and start getting the things that you want out of life. You see an attractive woman... Just go over to her and say hi. Find find okay. something that she's doing. You know, does she have a, a phone in her hand that might be interesting that you could strike up a conversation with? You know, is she going is she wearing something that's attractive? You know, if you want to get into the weeds with like game and cold approach, you got I hate to say it, but you're gonna to have to probably go get one of those game cold approach courses. Um uh, yes. if if I'm gonna make a recommendation, I'll give it to Troy Francis. Okay, so uh, yeah. Just, Jot down Troy Francis. He's got some. He's got some good eBooks. I don't like much of the Mano Swamp. I'll give it to him. So read okay. his stuff on cold approach and gaming. You know, and those type of open environments. As far as anything else, you use dating apps. You use swiping apps or anything? Uh, no. My solution to fixing my game, I thought about it, is uh, to go to these boot camps that a uh, uh, game coach do here in Argentina. And starting there, and no. there acquiring no. his, his scores if it's mm, no, 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 no. Uh, uh, look, I've I've seen enough people that do these boot camps, and they're mostly scammers. They'll place hookers, you know that that they pay that you can go and talk to that will sleep with you. They'll do some outrageous shit, and some of them are a little cuckoo for cocoa puffs. I can I can safely say that I like Troy. And I think that he's got good material. It's going to cost you way less than a boot camp. You can obviously read English because my book's only in English. So grab Troy's books and read a couple of his before you go do some boot camp. You're probably going to find okay. that you're going to waste money and you might be duped too. Oh, all right. Perfect. Hey, what is his name? Troy Francis. T-R-O. Okay. Okay. Okay, and the second one is uh, I want to become an entrepreneur, but I don't know where to start. Uh, the thing that I thought to find a solution to that is uh, to ha- uh, find a high income skill, and between those high income skills, I, I want to choose uh, digital have you, marketing. Have you watched any of the videos that I put on my channel about entrepreneurship? Uh, no, I I watch. watch. Uh, I read. Okay. Watch some of those first because I got a bunch of people that are waiting to come on. So I'm just going to cut it at the game question. You can come back another time and ask about entrepreneurship, but I would watch a bunch of those videos. I also have a course called the School of Entrepreneurship. Okay. It's going to open yeah, up know. for enrollment again in the spring. It's perfect. It's I perfect want to enroll in the future. Scenario like that. Okay. Okay. Thanks, right, Rich. Thanks for coming on. Take care. When mom walks into the room, Oh man. All right. I got to make some room here and just remove some of you from the, uh, the guest area. You can go watch on YouTube. Um, yeah. Need to fix my game. We dealt with that. Let's give it to RG over here and see what he's got for us. What's up, buddy? 
Hey, Rich, I just got a quick question. So I'm moving out of my parents' house for the first time in a couple of days. And I wanted to ask from your personal experience, if you have any mistakes you made when you did that yourself that I could learn from. Um, what's the concern? Like, what are you worried about? I'm a little bit like, you I'm know, moving really... out of the parents' house is like awesome. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm very excited about it. I'm not, that, it's not that I'm super concerned, but you know, if there's something I should know like a nugget of wisdom just on being are you moving down the street or are you moving to like another state or country uh, atlanta from new york i don't to know atlanta. where you are right now is that farther from where you're at yes so from new york to atlanta oh, okay so you're in new york all right um it's got nothing to do with family you know i was like do you have any roommates or are you living solo so i'm airbnb for the first month um probably gonna end up with roommates but I don't know yet. Okay. So I mean like the roommate scenario is slightly different because um, unless you know the guys, you're going to be dealing with strangers and you're going to have some problems. Roommates are going to be problematic if you have like people that just, you know, they're just nobodies that show up on like a wand ad. Um, you got to, you got to interview them. And when I say interview them, not like a job interview, but just like have a long enough conversation with them. Even if it's 10 minutes, ask them some questions. What do you like to do? What don't you like to do? Like, is this somebody that you want living in the same house as you, you know, and don't just do it because it's going to make your rent cheaper. So that's, that's on the roommate thing. Um, as far as living in an Airbnb away from family in another state, you going to school or is it for work? Work. You get paid well? Yeah, pretty well. Okay. Well, grind then, you know, your, you know, your crib is just going to be, you know, your crib. That's where you go to sleep paying, you know, whatever else it is you're going to do while you're there. But, you know, this is like the grind stage. You're a young, young guy. What are you in your twenties? Yeah, I'm 23. Yeah. So you're a young guy. So this is the grind stage. This is the lay the foundation. So the same sort of stuff that I was talking to, um, Elijah, you know, before this is a chase excellence, not, not women. This is a, you know, put your dent in the universe, you know, figure out what your life is going to look like, like what it is that you're building. Focus on that. Like, the the Airbnb that you're you know that you're renting that's just where you sleep just just look at it that you don't own it it's not yours you're just paying for the privilege of staying there for the time being right and then figure out what the next step looks like after that whether you're going to extend the stay if you're getting paid well I wouldn't take on rando um, roommates um, probably just get your own place okay if you're getting paid well gotcha and why do you say that just curious like. All right, so I'll throw this scenario at you. Let's say I could get a a roommate with someone that I was I ended up being compatible with. Mm -hmm. Um, it seems like you'd still lean towards solo. Why would that be? Or maybe is it not in that scenario? Yeah, okay, so I th I mean, like you know who Andrew Tate is, right? Of course. <laughs> I think the I think the way that he lives with his brother and his cousin. Well, I mean, he's in jail right now, obviously, but. I think that the way that he structured his life living with men on a mission, doing similar things, holding each other accountable, that would be an appropriate way to do it. Okay. But if it's the standard sort of gig where you just kind of bring in a roommate to help lower the rent and it's just a rando doing rando shit, like I've had, I've had some loser roommates. Like, I'll be honest with you. And, you know, like I said earlier, we've got anchors and sales in life. You know, sales will fill with wind and take you to your next port of call. Anchors will hold you back. I've had roommates that are alcoholics. I've had roommates that are drug addicts that would go on like cocaine binges for like three days. Like they would just disappear. They would be like, you wouldn't see them for three days and they would come back and they'd be like, yeah, I did this, that, and the other thing. It's like, wow, that's, that's pretty awesome. Weirdo, you know, sort of thing. like, like, you know, so you have to be discerning in your taste because you become the average of the five people you spend the most time with. You spend yeah. time with a bunch of losers. You're going to become, you know, part of that group. Like it's going to lower your average. So if you're going to do it, do it the way that Andrew does, where it's like people that are driven, people that are doing something with their lives, you know, people that are, you know, being accountable and heading in a direction. And they, and you know, at the same time, they know how to deal with women. They don't have those issues either, right? Like do it in that regard if you're going to do it. So that's why I'm saying if you're going to take on roommates, have, you know, have discerning taste and make sure that you surround yourself with great people. Understood. Yeah, no, that's great advice. Thank you. All right. Thanks, man. Good question. Very, very, very good question. Great questions tonight, guys. Very good questions tonight. Great show. Um, you're giving my editor lots of clips with, with uh, this one for sure. 
Um, if you're not subscribed to the Clips channel, go subscribe. Just search for Rich Cooper Clips or just go to the, uh, I think it's other channels and like the channel menu uh, menu or whatever. All right. Um, let's see what we got in the private chat, what people want to talk about. We got uh, Esco, I think it is. Esco. Esco, you're muted. Hey, Rich. How's it going? Good, man. What do you got for me tonight? Um, I have an issue approaching girls where I just get um, like just the thought of doing it makes me get really nervous and like mm -hmm. my whole body shuts down. I really don't know what to do about it. How old are you? 42. What kind of experience you got with women? Um, I've been in a few long-term relationships. Like if I talk to girls online, I don't have a problem. It's really just mm -hmm. the approach in person. So how did you end up in the other relationships like the, like the other ones that you've dealt with? Uh, the first relationship was I met through a friend. Mm -hmm. um, in the second rela relationship, I met um, a girl online. And I've gone uh, on to a couple dates with women that I've met online. But mm -hmm. really, I'm trying to meet girls in person because I'm really not into online dating. Okay. Um, height and weight? I'm... 130 pounds, 5'11". You're thin. Yeah, really thin. Okay. Um, why aren't we working on that? Um, I kind of like being thin. Um, it's kind of like my na my natural genetics is kind of to be thin a little bit. Like I could put on some more muscle. I mean, I'm... Well, I mean, a healthy weight for 5'11", man, would be 185, 190 pounds. You're... You're you're very underweight, like you're thin. You're you're a thin man. Yeah, um, I would runner. imagine some of the hesitation that you have with talking to women is probably something to do with your self image. Then, I mean, your camera's not on, so that tells me you know one thing right there too. Right, um, trying to stay anonymous for now. That's fine, but I mean, like you can't get away from the fact that you're underweight. I mean, you're you're at least forty pounds underweight. Yeah, I agree. I am underweight. All right. That fixing that helps, you know, tremendously with your confidence helps with, you know, cold approaching attractive women, because if you're attracted to a woman, you're going to walk up to her and say, Hey, I think you're beautiful. And you're going to feel confident that you're going to get a positive response because you look good. All right. Right. So you think the answer is just more calories and lifting that's stuff. that's not the answer but it's certainly going to help you know your self-confidence and the responses that you're going to get from women you don't have a lot of experience it sounds like you've only had two women that you've been with two ltrs yeah two ltrs okay how many women have you dated in total um probably around f five yeah so, you know, for 42, like that's like that's a pretty low number. Most guys at 42 have got um, much larger numbers. So they got a lot, lot more experience. Like I don't get a lot of guys in their 40s or I don't really know how to make the approach. Like how do I get off online and make cold approaches? Because guys in their 40s are already pretty competent, confident. They're like at the bank. The teller's hot. You know, they do the transaction. They're like, hey, you know, I'd like to grab coffee sometime. You know, would you be down for that and hand the phone sort of thing? Like, you know they kind of do it as they're going about their days. They're not um, carving out like, okay, three hours on a Saturday, I'm going to go to this uh, part of Central Park and just cold approach all the attractive girls that I possibly can. Uh, like that's a waste of their time. So they're kind of doing it as they're going about their day, right? So I'm just trying to, like, I'm just trying to get in your head because I don't really know what I'm looking at here because you want to stay a non, that's fine. But I got a guy that's online that doesn't have a lot of experience with women in his 40s, grossly underweight and like the confidence in your voice, it sounds like it's missing. Like there's, there's not a lot of strength. There's not a lot of confidence in the voice. Um, what does it say in the chat here? I see the chat's going wild on another screen. Yeah. There's a lot of comments here in the chat. I mean, like you can look at it for yourself. Yeah. I mean, I think, um, I don't know if it's a confidence issue. I mean, I get really nervous. I'm not really sure if that's related to confidence. I mean, I kind of have a pretty high opinion of myself. It's, um, I think not more not about... high enough to put yourself online tonight. Obviously, staying it on. Have you run a hormone panel to check your uh, testosterone, estrogen, DHT, all that stuff? No, I've been taking um, some supplements, but I haven't mm -hmm. 
I had it tested. You should test it. I mean, you know, it's one of the things I talk about in my book. Managing your endocrine system should be starting at 30 for guys. Run your blood labs once a year, you know, see where you're at. You know, you could be low T. Like you're there's a lot of things that could be going on there that you're not really dealing with. Confidence can come quite easily, you know, once you're uh, like there's no guy how can I put this? I don't know anybody that rolls in a supercar club in Toronto that we do rallies with or do day drives that is like, there's no guy in a Lamborghini that doesn't have confidence, right? I used to have a Acura NSX. Nice car. What'd you do with it? Um, a truck T-boned me, so I ended up selling it. Was it the um, older style or the newer hybrid one? No, it was the, the old one. It was a 91. That's too bad. Those things are pretty valuable today. What did you replace it with? Uh, I was in school at the time. I didn't have a lot of money, so I just got a Honda Civic. You had an NSX when you were in school? Yeah, I was like, when I was like, um, that's kind of like the way I got my first girlfriend. She really liked my car. I was like 21 at the time. Okay. Okay. Are you still a car guy? Do you still drive nice cars? Uh. I would, I would kind of like to, but I've also have like other priorities, um, about investing and buying property and stuff like that. And mm, I just okay. don't know about spending the money on cars. Uh, and what do you do for a living? Like what uh, field or industry? Are you in? I'm a designer. Okay. You make some good money. Yeah. About 80 K. Where do you live? It's, like in a large uh, city or Phoenix? Uh, it's not a lot of money. Or city like that just you know being honest especially in your 40s right yeah i mean i i have a house and a paid off car so it, i mean mm. it's i mean it's not uh mclaren money but it, it it works for me okay well look man there's there's lots of things you know to consider here we you know we have we've t we've touched on a few of them like your your confidence is going to come from experience in life and from growth you know personally like I said, uh, like I know guys that are five foot four that drive Lamborghinis are confident as shit. They approach a girl and they get laid all the time. They have no problems with it whatsoever, right? Older than you even. Um, you know, at your age, you should have a, a lot more familiarity with women and what they respond to and what you need to sort of get out of way life and sort of do. Um, uh, you know, you got some work to do, right? Like you're lacking the the results based on where you're at right now. And I think you know what the lacking areas are. I mean, we, had, we identified one of them, you know, the optics of masculinity and strength is something that women like and that men feel better walking around in. I've, I've been, like, I'm six foot two and I've been 135 pounds, right? That's, that's very skinny. Like I, like I don't feel good. I don't feel confident. I don't feel like I'm imposing, you know, if I walk in a room that I feel invisible, I'm 220 pounds now, same height, right? Your, like your demeanor, your confidence, your, uh, the space that you take up even changes, right? So your questions about confidence. So we've covered a few things that would be helpful for you, but there's obviously work there for you to do too, my friend, right? Okay. Um, I appreciate it. I guess some next steps would be to gain some weight and get practice. Um, Check your That's hormone panel, get some practice, you know, improve your life. You know, your confidence comes with successes. Wins, wins build confidence. Okay. I appreciate right. it. I, uh, I watch your YouTube channel every night. So cool. I appreciate, appreciate the it, man. content you put out. Thanks for watching. Thank you. All right. Yeah, confidence is something that you definitely have to build as a guy. Look, man, we like we all start from nothing. We all start from zero. We're all born as nothing. We all have to, like, we all travel the earth in the same, like, we all do the same laps around the sun every year. And it's what we do on this rock during that year in the lap around the sun that changes the year after that and the year after that. So, you know, if you identify a weak area in your life or if you identify there's something that you'd like that you're not getting, okay, well, what do I want to get? I want to... I want to approach more beautiful women. Okay. Why am I not approaching more beautiful women? I don't feel confident. Why don't I feel confident? Start asking yourself some questions. Do you feel significant? Do you feel strong? Do you feel masculine? 
you know, like these are the sorts of things that will improve your demeanor, will improve how you move about life, how people see you, the space that you take up. You can hear it in the guy's voice. Like he's got a more subdued, uh, demure, almost feminine, you know, kind of voice. That's fine. You know, that's, that's how some people speak. You can change that. Honestly, I mean, like, learn, learn to communicate, in, you know, in a way that's more confident, that's more masculine, that's, that's strong with a deeper tone. Um, I'm sure there's videos on you. Look, man, there's videos on YouTube on everything. I, I guarantee if you go to YouTube, YouTube, be like, how do I deepen my voice? There's probably exercises that you could do, I would imagine. I mean, having, having healthy levels of testosterone helps too, obviously, but you get it. Um, all right. So I think we're going to wrap it up on that note. It's been it's been a fun show. We covered a lot tonight. Had some great questions. Um, I hope you guys revisit the intro of the show and the stuff that I talked about there because there's loads of useful information, um, you know, that I dispense as far as advice on managing your energy and self control and growing, you know, within. So check it out. We're going to uh, wrap up and uh, peace out on that note. All right, guys, if you enjoyed that podcast, make sure you visit my website at richcooper.ca to learn more about my courses, my book, The Unplugged Alpha Community, or booking me for private coaching. Also, if you are a Canadian with $15,000 or more of credit card debt and what you are doing right now isn't paying off the balances, then visit totaldebtfreedom.ca and hit get a free quote to see if you qualify to settle your credit card debt for less than you owe today over the next 48 months. Make sure you check out the top pinned comment on YouTube for all the links mentioned during the show. Peace.